You know, one of the privileges we have as believers is that we are always on top of God's mind. Right In marketing, there is something they call top of mind awareness. Uh, so it's a term that shows um, how your company or your product ranks um, when it comes to when people are discussing your product, discussing your service, um, the ranking of, um, of how you rank is uh, called top of mind awareness. But you know what? As far as God is concerned, you are number one on his mind. <laughs> Somebody excited about that. <laughs> you are number one. Should I show you in the scriptures? Let's read together Psalm 8, verse 3 to 4, NIV. That's our opening text. Psalm 8, verse 3 to 4, NIV. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Right? So as far as God is concerned, the only thing God is thinking about every day and night is you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so when we have this understanding, then we all know why we should praise him. And that's the topic for today, top of mind awareness, because that is who we are to God. That is how God rates us. So the question is, do we rate God the same way? So throughout this month, we've been exploring the theme praise, right? And the focus is to help us to, cha to channel our attention towards God. The reality is that human needs are insatiable. You will always have something you need, something you desire, but when your desire now becomes your focus, that you no longer think about God, then you are doing yourself a disservice. Are we together? If you're doing yourself a disservice, so that's what we've been saying. So if God is, top, is uh, if you are a top of mind, uh, as far as God is concerned, then God should also be on top of your mind. Are we together? If God is always thinking about you, if God honors you so much that he places you above every of his creature, then we should also rank God the same. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye, seek ye what? First. God first. Seek ye first. God must be first. And how do you make God first? It is by honoring him, by praising him, by channeling your attention and focus and affections towards him. That's how God becomes first in our lives. Are we together, people? That's how God becomes first in our lives. So our senior pastor described praise from the first um, message. He said, praise is the celebration of the qualities or accomplishments of someone or something. It is an expression of approval and admiration. Praise has effect on God, you, and Satan. So praise is the celebration of the qualities or accomplishments of someone or something. So as we celebrate God, what does that mean? We put him first. That's what it means. We put him first. We celebrate him in everything that we do. Praise God. All right, so tonight we're going to be exploring how you can make God top of your thoughts, top, um, uh, or why, top, or uh, how and why. I will just combine everything together, but you will understand it as we go, by, as we go um, in, in the conversation. Because until we understand how God rates us, and if we, until we understand the importance of making God top of mind, we will never get to that point where we can see, be secured in our lives, be secured in our future, be secured in who we are and who God says we are. I'm telling you, we need to get to that point where we are fully secured, where your life is not moved by happenings, but you are only moved by the world because your focus is not on what is happening around you. Your focus is on God. Praise God. You know, I, I'll never forget a, a time in my life when I needed to move to another phase. And, and that will lead us to our first conversation today. It was August 2015. I, I know I shared a part of the story some time ago, but the foundation of the story was that we, know, we, uh, we just got married nearly then, 2015, just two months after. You know, and I remember the very first day, August 1, and God said that 
we should just praise him all through that month. So it was a month of praise and test giving for my family. It wasn't something that someone told me. It was something I heard. And we're just praising God and praising God. And in the course of the month, God told me and said, look, go and meet this person. I want you to volunteer with him because you are moving into the ministry phase of your work with me. It was clear. I heard it. <laughs> so moving to the ministry phase, I met him September 1. I started work with him. That was 2015. September 1, 2017, I became a pastor in this time exactly two years after. You know, um, what happened or what transpired in between, they are specific instructions. So why is it important for us to praise God? Because praise is an instruction. Praise is an instruction. We will read some scriptures, but we need to understand that praise is an instruction. God commands us to praise him. God commands us to praise him. Let's read Psalm 100 verse 105. Psalm 100 verse 105. We'll just take a few scriptures to, uh, to establish that and we're still going to praise God some more. Psalm 100, 1 to 5, NIV. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Shout for joy. You see, it is a command. Shout. Praise him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Those are not suggestions. Is somebody with me? Those words we just read, they are not suggestions. It's an instruction. So when the disciples came to meet Jesus, they said, teach us to pray. He said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Start by praising him, by worshiping him. It is an instruction. He gave a template, but that is what it is. It is an instruction. So when we are saying praise God, sometimes we look at our situation and you say, how can I be praising God when things are not working? It's because you have shifted your attention from God. That is why you are seeing what is not working. If you are looking unto God, you will not see what is not working. I'm telling you. You will see that there are more things working for you than things that are working against you. That's what praise does. It shifts your focus. It's an instruction. <laughs> it's an instruction. Let's go to Philippians 4, 6 to 7, NLT. It said, don't worry about anything. Now, does that look like a suggestion? <laughs> don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Don't worry about anything. Can you help me preach to your neighbor? Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Like that old song. Don't you worry about anything. <laughs> Everything. Ah, we, all of you are Gen Z. <laughs> Do not worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. That's scriptures. Don't worry about anything. He said, instead, pray about everything. He said, tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. See, if you can do a gratitude list, eh, maybe somebody should try that at the end of this service when you get home. Just take a book or your notepad and just try to list some of the things that God has done for you. It will shock you. I'm telling you, you think nothing is working because um, social media is amplifying one area of your life. For example, if you are not married, uh, anywhere you go to, you see single, single, single. So you think that the major problem in life is to be single. 
I'm telling you, because everywhere you go, you see single, 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 lady, singles, bridge, lady. Uh, so you will, something will just tell you that that is the most, uh, that is the, the worst problem in life. I'm telling you. So you will now leave every other thing that God has done. But because you are always on TikTok and following a uh, president of Singles Republic. So, <laughs> because it is the people you are following, that is why you think that is the worst problem in life. I'm telling you. So, but when you focus on the word of God, you realize that he has done so much for you. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. See, God has done so much for us this year. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, He has done so much for you. Praise God. Let's take another one. Let's take another one. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, NIV. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in what? In what? All circumstances. Whether it looks good or not. Whether it looks bad or not. Whether it looks favorable or not. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's the scriptures. Give thanks in all circumstances. The good, the bad, the ugly. See, it is you that is classifying whether something is good, bad, or ugly. In God's um, plan, everything is part of the design. It is when you get to the end of the road, you will now start thanking God for that thing you thought was ugly. I'm telling you. Because praise changes your attitude. And it helps you to see God in everything, to see the sovereignty of God. Because once we understand the sovereignty of God, then you can say of a surety that all things are working for my good. Even when you can't explain what is happening right now. Because God is not bound by what is happening now. He is bound by his word. Are we on the same page? God is bound by his word. It doesn't matter what happens in between. It's the beginning and the end. So if he told you from the beginning, he will take you to the end. Yes, you may have to go through some orders in between, but one thing is certain, you will get to the destination. And I prophesy to someone tonight, in the few days left for this calendar year to wrap up, that word, that much fruit word, will find expression in your life. <laughs> You may not know how, you may not know when, you may not know where. <laughs> Elisha said, there will be no rain. He said, yet your valleys shall be filled with water. That is somebody's testimony. <laughs> you will not see any signs. <laughs> you will just wake up one day like every normal day. <laughs> you will wake up like every normal day. The day Joseph woke up <laughs> to become prime minister, it was a normal day for him in prison. But he did not know that that day was his last day in the prison. For someone, your last day has come. <laughs> Because God is opening a new chapter in your life. God is opening a new chapter in your life. Tonight, you will start seeing the signs. In the name of Jesus. Hey, he did not know. It was an ordinary day. Ah, you know, if it was, uh, you know, those days, you say, Gigi, Boji, Baba, Boa, Fuck, <laughs> he just woke up and then somebody said, come, 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 come. The Pharaoh has sent for you. Pharaoh sent for me. And they said, you cannot come like this. So then they took him to the bathroom. They shaved his hair, put some, ah, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And then the guy appeared. Ah, King Pharaoh, good afternoon, sir. Ah, what is it? You had a dream. Ah, dream. That is my specialty. Now, oh yeah, say, tell me, tell me, tell me. Say, ah, nobody can interpret it. Oh yeah. And then, pop, like, when the Lord returned the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dreams. That is your testimony in the name of Jesus. 
Give thanks in all circumstances. In all circumstances. Because your miracle is just around the corner. So you can't allow anything to clog that, that wheel of miracle that you have been, you've been rolling all year round. This is the time for harvest. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's take one more. One more. Instruction. Praise is an instruction. Joshua 6, I'll read verse 16 and jump to verse 20. Joshua 6, verse 16 and verse 20. The Bible says, the seventh time around, NIV, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. When the trumpet sounded, verse 20 now, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Hallelujah. You are taking the city. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 5. He said, you are a city on a hill. So any city that God has given to you, but that you are yet to occupy, this is your season. <laughs> this is your season. This is your season. This is your time. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise is an instruction. Praise is an instruction. Let's take the next one. Praise is an insurance. Why you should praise? <laughs> praise is an insurance. Not only is praise an instruction, it is also an insurance. God preserves us when we praise him. God preserves us when we praise him. Psalm 8 verse 2. Psalm 8 verse 2. I'm going to read from the easy version. I hope we have it, right? Psalm 8 verse 2. Um, but if you don't have it, you can display any one you have. Psalm 8 verse 2, easy version. He said, you have taught children and babies to praise you. You do that to show your enemies how strong you are. Anyone who turns against you has to be quiet. Your cruel enemies can do nothing. Hallelujah. Your cruel enemies can do nothing. See, said, see, praise is an insurance. It guarantees that no one can touch you. Because praise commands the presence of God. And when you put God first, remember, even before you were born, God has already put you first. Now, when you now acknowledge that God has put you first and you are praising him and worshiping him, God re uh, reinforces the fact that, yes, you are top of mind. And say, look, he said, when the ways of a man please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. So remember, we read in 1 Thessalonians, he said, um, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God. So when you do the will of God, what happens? God protects you. <laughs> he preserves you because you are doing his will. Praise is the will of God. It's the will of God. He said, you do that to show your enemies how strong you are. Such that even babies are praising him to silence the enemy. And I declare for someone, any voice that has been speaking against you, I declare in the name of Jesus, an end has come to every raging and opposing voices in the name of Jesus. <laughs> The Lord has given you victory. And you are going this season, walking in the reality, in the confirmation of your victory. In the name of Jesus. Say so your cruel enemies can do nothing. Those places where they are threatened to hurt you, you will get there and you will not find them. <laughs> ah, someone did not catch that. You will get there and you will not find them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise is an insurance. Acts 16, 25 to 26. Acts 16, 25 to 26. Again, easy version. The Bible says, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. They were also singing songs to praise God. The other people in the prison were listening to them, verse 26. The ground under the prison suddenly shook strongly. Immediately, 
all the prison doors opened, the chains that held the people in the prison all fell off. <laughs> Hallelujah. The chains, see, the foundation of the prison shook because they started to praise God and once they honored God, God also honored them. God also honored them. Praise God. So praise is an insurance. If you have ever lived in fear or you've worked with people that, do, that don't seem to recognize the grace of God in your life, stop fighting them. See, one of the challenges many Christians have is that we allow our society to tell us how to behave. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So you cannot use flesh and blood strategies to win spiritual battles. Hello? Say, ah, me, I cannot take nonsense, so if he talks to me anyhow, uh, that is why you are still there. Keep running your mouth. Let them talk to you anyhow. You go and face God. He is your defender. <laughs> are we together? You go and face God. You go and pray to God, and you will see what God can do. <laughs> you will see what God can do. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll never forget the story um, while we were on campus. Um, you know, there was this lecturer, a very, very notorious guy. <laughs> if I mention his name, some, some of my colleagues <laughs> will know him. Uh, um, you know, very notorious guy. And then he threatened one of our sisters that she will not graduate. I think I, I shared the story once that she will not, I don't know whatever happened, you know. And then she mentioned in the fellowship we prayed. So, incidentally, he was the supervisor of that sister. You know what God did? God sent him on sabbatical. The day the sister defended her project, she, it, it was, he returned the evening of the day she defended her project. That was the, the exact day, but it was later in the evening. That was when he returned. <laughs> And that man, if he says you are not graduating, if you don't know God like that sister, if you are sure to have an extra year, <laughs> you are sure. He came back the same day she defended her project. You say there is no God. <laughs> hey, praise is your insurance. Praise is your insurance. Let's take one more. Daniel 3, I'll read 13 to 15, and then I'll jump to 17. Daniel 3, 13 to 15 and 17. NIV. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, verse 14, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zeta, lyre, harp, pipe, all these are praise instruments. <laughs> he said, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Look at that. Look at what, what that guy said. Now verse 17. He said, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Those are people who know their God. People who know that when they honor God, God will honor them. Are we together? When you honor God by praising him, by putting him first, top of mind, remember. When you put God top of mind, he also puts you top of mind. He said, when you pass through the waters, they will not drown you. When you pass through the fires, they will not consume you. That is what praise does. It brings the presence of God to guarantee your preservation when you go through the heat of life. And did God deliver them or not? Hallelujah. So we must learn that if we want to do prayer right, we must learn to switch to thanksgiving, to switch to praise. 
to switch to praise. Praise is an insurance. Praise is an insurance. Praise the Lord. Praise is an insurance. Let's take one more. We're going to take a few uh, to understand this concept of praise. Hallelujah. Then number, number three. So we said praise is an instruction. Number two, praise is an insurance. Number three, praise is a proof of intelligence. Praise is a proof of intelligence. Now, why did I say that? <laughs> right? So, Praise is proof that we understand the intelligence of God in creation. In creation, look at the opening text we, we read, Psalm 8, 3 to 4. It said, when I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, he said, what is mankind that you are mindful of him? So God is the one in charge of all the creations. So our senior pastor used an analogy on, um, on Sunday, if you were in the service or if you, if you were able to catch up with the replay. He talked about the distance of the sun to the earth. Can we remember? He talked about the speed of light, how that, that it takes about eight minutes for, for light to travel to the earth. So meaning that if, if the sun goes off, before you realize that the sun has gone off, it's about eight minutes. Now let me try and paint the picture of how fast eight minutes is. If there is no traffic, eh, and you are driving towards Magboro. In eight minutes, you will actually get to Kara. Hello? If you don't know, me, I do 10 minutes <laughs> from Kara to church. So I can tell you, so in eight minutes from here, if you know that axis very well, all right, sorry for our audience online, in case you are not in Nigeria, you may not understand what I'm trying to say, but for those of us in Lagos, you understand, so it's eight, so you can imagine that something happened here and you're already at Kara before you realize that something has happened. So let me even, okay, that one is even too far. Let me paint a picture. There was one Sunday, I know some of us will remember, um, was it two months ago, if I can remember very well? After service, we closed and we were going home, right? So when you get to governor's office, before total, Everywhere was dry. When, you got, when we get to um, governor's office, it was raining heavily. I mean, heavily. It was one Sunday afternoon. Now, how did I know that the rain did not just start? I made a U-turn and went to NNPC to buy fuel that Sunday. When I made the U-turn and came out of the rain, everywhere coming back to church was dry. I'm telling you, then you go back again, make the U-turn, it was still, and it rained from that place towards um, Magboro side and all of that. And if for people who were in church, so if you had called somebody at Magboro and say, uh, where are you? I, I thought you said they're going to meet, come to meet me. I said, please, I, I can't come. It's raining heavily. Yeah, a person is wondering, uh, which rain? Am I not? <laughs> you know, from Alausa here. So I know in science they say, oh, it's the distribution of the cloud and all of that. But who did that distribution? Who did it? Let me show you something. Let's read Job. Job 38, 4 to 11. Job 48. Uh, you know, God answered some of those questions when he was talking to Job. Let's read AMPC, right? Let's read AMPC. Job 38, 4 to 11. He said, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare to me if you have and no understanding. Who determined the measures of the earth if you know? Or who stretched the measuring line upon it? Upon what were the foundations of it fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with doors when it broke forth and, 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 dis, and issued out of the womb? When I made the clouds the garment of it, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and marked for it my appointed boundary, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you wondered what is keeping the, the waves of the oceans from swallowing up everybody on the island? And it has been like that for, for hundreds or, or several thousands of years. So who set the boundary for the sea? Is it scientists? Hello? So when you look at creation, then it helps you to appreciate God better. 
It shows that we are actually intelligent because see, when you celebrate the intelligence of God, then his own intelligence begins to flow through you. How can we exhibit wisdom as a people? Is to celebrate the wisdom of God. Is to recognize and celebrate the wisdom of God. And naturally we will be wise because we are keeping God top of mind. Top of mind. He said, if any one of you lacks wisdom, he said, let him ask. Let him ask. In your asking, just begin to look at God's wisdom and begin to celebrate him and praise him for his intelligence. That intelligence will naturally begin to flow through you because you are recognizing and, and appreciating his own intelligence. So praise is a sign, is a proof of intelligence. If somebody cannot praise God, that person is a fool. <laughs> it's not intelligent. That's what it means. It means you think you know everything by yourself. Amen, somebody. Because that's what it means. It means you think you know everything by yourself. So praising God, um, uh, uh, praise God for his intelligence in creation. Praise him. And that is what happens to us. As you begin to praise him, then his spirit, his intelligence begins to flow through you. And people look at you, they're wondering, how are you able to do things so easily? How are you able to solve complex problems and make them simple? It's because you are in tune with divine intelligence. That's what praising God does. So if you don't know anything to praise God for, just begin to look at the creation and begin to look at the wonder. How is the sun being sustained for many years and nothing is happening? And it's just there. How is it not falling? Praise God for his intelligence. Hallelujah. So let's take one more. We're still going to praise God some more tonight, right? So number four, okay? How many have we shared already? We said praise is an what? Praise is an instruction. Number two, praise Praise is an insurance. Number three, praise is a proof of intelligence. Number four, praise is our inspiration. Praise is our inspiration. See, when you lack inspiration, you must learn to switch to praise. <clears throat> and there's a principle I will, I will explain to us. Uh, when I was in secondary school, I used to love math. I mean, I, <laughs> I love math a lot, you know. Uh, there, I will never forget one day, um, I think it was my under level, yes. Usually then in school, they give us one week to prepare for exams. All right, so one of those days, I was trying to solve a math problem, and then I got stuck somewhere. So my, uh, some of my friends were playing football. So I joined them, and we're playing, we're playing. Somewhere in the middle of the playing, the thing just entered, <laughs> you know. That, Ah, yeah, I got it, I got it. I, I, they come, they come, they come. I just, you know, uh, and you know, what that does to you, right, um, when you shift your attention away from the problem and then you can create an atmosphere of joy and peace, many of the things you are looking for will naturally come to you. It's a spiritual principle, and I will explain from scriptures. That thing is a spiritual principle, right? So let's read... Let's read um, Psalm 144, verse 1 to 2, the Passion Translation. Psalm 144, verse 1 to 2. And I will tell another story that many of us who are movie lovers will likely remember. So, <clears throat> Psalm 144 it said, There is only one strong, safe, and secure place for me. It's in God alone who gives me strength for the battle. It's my shelter of love and my fortress of faith. Who wraps himself around me as a secure shield? I hide myself in this one who subdues enemies before me. So when you get to that point where you are thinking, how do I break out of this thing? Switch to praise. Just switch to praise. Just switch to praise. See, praise creates a friendly environment. Remember, the Bible says, for you inhabit the praises of your people, Psalm 22, verse 3. You inhabit the praises of your people. So when you, when you praise God, you bring that presence to you and what you think is a problem. You know, um, how many of us remember this movie, uh, Three Idiots, right? <clears throat> 
So uh, we know Joy Lobo. You can remember Joy Lobo, right? The guy that was uh, making uh, uh, the, the drone project. So because he was asking for extension from, from the supervisor, the guy wasn't going to give him, he was confused. So at some point, he quit, right? Then Rancho <laughs> picked up the project, and where he and his friends were fooling around, ah, Liz, where? Say, Ureka, Ureka, Ureka. And then he picked the project, the idea came to him, he picked the project and completed it. By the time he was going to show Lobo what he has done, the guy already took his life. See, when you shift your attention away from God to the problem, you become overwhelmed. But when you switch to praise, so that's what they were doing. You see that they were singing and making, and that was exactly what happened to me that day. I will never forget. I was playing football. <laughs> and then I just remember there was one equation I was trying to solve. The thing just dropped. I just said, guys, are they come, are they come. I ran out, ran into the room, and I was just trying to say, yes, I got it, I got it. See, stop focusing on the problem. Switch to praise. Switch to praise. <laughs> Switch to praise. Switch to praise. Praise breaks the hold of sadness and lifts your spirit. It breaks the clog of confusion and creates an air of clarity, bringing you into a state of flow. If you understand what they call flow, you're just, you, everything is just aligned. That's why for some of us, when you are doing some serious study, you have one music that is playing on the background. You are creating an atmosphere. It's called flow. Ideas are just, the thing is just flowing. You, it's called flow. That's the atmosphere. Flow. See, when you are tensed up, see, it, this is something I can prove to you again and again because I, I, I do a whole lot of stuff sometimes. Sometimes you are trying to write an article and you are trying to write just one sentence and one hour you are still there. Nothing is flowing. <laughs> Has it ever happened to anybody before? One hour. One hour. This thing is just... See, you are, it means you are struggling. At that point, just leave the thing. If you can dance, go and dance. If you can play, go and play. Just go and do something. By the time you can create that friendly atmosphere and you come back, you enter into a state of flow. What you are trying to do in two hours, you can do it in 15 minutes. Are we together? That is what happens, a state of flow. Let's look at an example of a state of flow in the Bible. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 15 to 18. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 15 to 18. NIV. So this was Elisha. He said, but now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha, and he said, this is what the Lord says, I will fill this valley with pools of water, for this is what the Lord says, you will see neither wind nor rain, yet this valley will be filled with water, and you, your cattle, and your other animals will drink. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. He will also deliver Moab into your hands. A state of flow. Before that time, Elisha was angry. <laughs> he told the king of Israel, he said, if not because of Jehoshaphat, I will not even look at you. He said, ah, God save you that Jehoshaphat came with you. He said, but now I am angry. I can't do anything. He said, bring me a harpist. Let's change the atmosphere. <laughs> Let's change the atmosphere. So as the harpist was playing, bah, there was a flow, and then the word of God came. The word of God came. So I want to encourage someone, you need to continually create your atmosphere. Carry your atmosphere around you everywhere you go. See, the world will, remember what Jesus said in John 14, he said, in the world you will have tribulation. So whenever you step outside of the word of God into the world, what you will see is tribulation. So to remain in God is to remain in his presence. To remain in his presence, you remain in praise. That is the only place where you can have peace. Are we together? That is the only place where, so don't expect that people will give you peace. Nobody will give you peace. In the world, that's what Jesus said, you will have tribute. He said, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. So 
to be of good cheer, you need to create the atmosphere of praise, the atmosphere of joy, the atmosphere of thanksgiving. That's how you enter into your flow. So if you're a creative person, you know sometimes when you enter um, the, the room of creative people, it's always <laughs> upside down. <laughs> sometimes they learn to create order out of chaos. You know, and that is that should be our responsibility as a people, right? Let's take two more and then we'll praise God some more tonight before we wrap up, right? So, praise is the key to increase. Praise is the key to increase. Remember, praise, um, let's take it from the beginning. Praise is an instruction, place is an insurance, praise. Um, is a proof of intelligence. Praise is our inspiration. Number five, praise is the key to increase. Praise is the key to increase. Praise destroys limitations and bet miracles. Praise shifts our focus from problems to God. If it is God, it will grow. It's just a matter of time. Let me say that again. If it is God, it will grow. It's just a matter of time. Praise is an expression of faith in the greatness and goodness of God. Now, there was a research that was published in the year 2021. This research was published in the International Journal of Innovative Research in Technology, Volume 8, Issue 1. So you can go and read the research yourself. The study was titled Psychological and Physiological Effect in Plant Growth and Health by Using Positive and Negative Words. The researchers investigated the impact of positive and negative words and environment on plant growth. So they tested two epiprenum orion plants. Now, some people call it devil's ivy, all right? Some call it um, I'm trying, uh, Solomon Island ivy. You can check it uh, if you can write it down so you can read about it. So these plants were subjected to different conditions, one in a negative environment with curses and the other in a positive environment with praise. Various growth parameters such as germination rate, plant height, leaf size, and health, and health indicators were measured over four weeks. The results revealed that a positive environment and words significantly enhanced plant growth, leading to higher germination rates, increased height, larger size, and overall better health compared to plants in a negative environment. So remember, the, uh, the, uh, the journal is International Journal of Innovative Research in Technology, Volume 8, Issue 1, 2021. So you may want to read it up, right? So what they did was that they, they had two samples of plants, the same plant from the same uh, gene, and then one, they were always speaking curses over one plant and then speaking praises over another plant. And in the space of four years, the results were remarkably different. Why? Words, atmosphere. See, for some of us, the reason why there is always issue around your life is because you are too negative. So I, I had an inspiration while preparing for this last night. Um, I, I, think, I, I think I posted it on my social media page, right? That uh, words are windows to our hearts. The kind of words that you say reflect um, your personality, reflect your mental health, your mental state, and they also reflect the direction of your future, the direction of your life, right? So words are powerful, and you can see that in Proverbs 18, uh, you can see that in Matthew 12, you can also see that in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt uh, uh, communication proceed out of your mouth, all right? So words are powerful. See, the words that you say are the truest reflection of the kind of person that you are. Whether you are saying it to yourself or about others. Some people think that they are positive, but every time they are saying something, they are always criticizing another person. Saying what the person is not doing right, how bad the person is. See, you are a negative person because your words, whether you are saying it to yourself or about others, 
what you are saying is a reflection of who you are. So to change what you want to happen in your life, then change what you are saying. And how one way you can change that is through praise. Is somebody with me? Just keep praising, keep praising. So when you have an attitude of praise, then instead of looking at what people are not doing right, your focus is more on what they are doing right. And as you are saying the right thing about other people, right things begin to happen around you. Are we on the same page? Let's read, let's read um, um, Psalm 67, and we, 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 will take, uh, we will take the last point, all right? Psalm 67, he said, let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Now, what will happen? Verse 6, then the heads shall yield our increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the heart shall fear him. He said, let the people praise you. Then what will happen? Then, then the head shall yield an increase. Then, so if for someone, you need to check what you are saying. Are we together, people? You need to check what you are, because your, your own solution is to just change what you are saying. Are we together? That is your solution. Just change what you are saying. And remember, we said, you just praise God for his intelligence. Just look at the, if you don't have anything to say, just look at the intelligence of God and keep saying it. Keep saying it. You will realize that things will start rearranging around you. Things will start rearranging around you. So praise is the key to increase. Praise is the key to increase. You want to experience increase in your family, increase in your business, keep praising God. No matter how small you think it is, if you are not grateful for what is small, you will not be grateful for what is big. He that is faithful in little is faithful in much. He that is thankful in little is thankful in much. He that is bitter in little will be bitter in much. It is what it is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. John 6, 11, John 6, 11. The Bible says, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. Hallelujah to Jesus. What is not enough is because you are not grateful for what you have. When you become grateful, when you switch to praise, you will realize that what you have is more than enough. Hello? What you have is more than enough. You call it and say, what is this? What is this? You know what? Uh, uh, manna. You know the meaning of manna. What is this? That's how many of us look at our pay, whether you work for yourself or you collect a salary. At the end, what is this? What is this? If what you see is what is this, that is what it is. What is this? <laughs> Even when you get promoted, yeah, what is this? What, so there is no difference. What is this? Because you are, not, you are not grateful. It's an attitude, right? So you see, when you hear what some people are earning, you'll be wondering, eh? So you're earning this much and your life is like this. Because you are not grateful. Are we together? You, you see, there are some people that look better than you, that are doing well than you. Go and, go and ask for what, you will be shocked that they are earning far less than what you are earning. But because they have learned contentment, because they have learned to be grateful, that is why things are working for them. Godliness with contentment is what? It's great gain. But much with complaint is what? <laughs> it's great loss. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> It's, that's what it is. Jesus gave thanks, and the things started, started multiplying. So that is how to experience multiple. See, when you praise God, you experience increase. Praise the Lord. I want to take the last one, but before I do that, I, because I don't want any interruption in between, right, we're going to be giving God our victory dance tonight. But before we dance, I want to pray with someone. I want to pray with someone. I just want to end it like every other message, right? Probably you don't have a working relationship with God. You may be online or you are catching up with the replay of, of this broadcast. Um, you don't have a relationship with God. 
Um, I just want to pray with you before we go into the next one because we are just going to praise God like we have never done before. You are going to dance and celebrate understanding what God has done for you. So if you are that person, you don't have a relationship with God. Can you just put your hand on your heart and, and let me pray with you? Probably you have, you have left God. You have left him. You, you've gone your own way. You have started doing your own things. Can you just go ahead and, and just put your hand on your heart tonight and just say, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I give you my everything. Lord, have your way. Probably you have, you have, you have walked away from God. Your life has become negative from everything we have said today. You know that your life has become negative and you, and you don't see any positive thing in your economy, in your country, and all you think and say is how things have gotten from bad to worse. Can you just ask God to forgive you tonight and Say, God, help me. Help my confession. Help me to focus on you. Can you ask God to help you tonight? Just ask him to help you tonight. Say, God, take away this negative spirit from me. Take away this critical spirit from me. In the name of Jesus. That honest person who has lost their relationship with God, you've, you've backslidden or you don't even have any relationship yet, can you just place your hand on your heart and ask God, ask Jesus to come into your life tonight. Confess him as your Lord and your Savior. Receive him into your heart tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ask him to come into your life. Amen. Please take this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I thank you because you are the God of my life. I thank you because you have taken away the burden of sin and shame. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for accepting me as your child. I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for everyone who has said that prayer. Lord, we ask that you will keep them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. In case you said that prayer online, our officials dropped a link right now. Please click the link and give us your details. We'll keep in touch with you. If you're in the auditorium, um, our officials are going to give you a card. Please um, um, fill the card and put it on your share after now. All right, so let's take the last point. I'll request the praise team to join me on, on stage as we take the last point. We're going to take the last point and we're going to sing and dance. It's your victory praise. Remember, as you are praising God tonight, everything is turning around to your advantage. Now, the last point, praise is a winning idea. Praise is a winning idea. Hallelujah. Praise is a winning idea. I'm going to read these two verses of the Bible and we're going to dance and celebrate and rejoice. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's read together 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20 to 22, and I'll read Joshua 6, 16 to 20, and we are going to take over the city. Hallelujah. 2 Chronicles 20, 20 to 22, NIV. The Bible says, early in the morning, they led for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out of the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mansia, who were evading Judah, and they were defeated. Somebody give the Lord a shout. I can't believe you are still sitting down. Hallelujah. I can't believe you are still sitting down. I can't believe you are still sitting down.
are still sitting down. Now look at that. Look at that. So let me read verse uh, Joshua 6, 20, and then we'll praise. He said, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so everyone charged in straight in, and they took the city. Somebody charge in tonight and celebrate and give.